Okay, so what I'm going to do to finish off um, this section is to show, um, so part two is awesome interactivity you can add into your textbook. This um, form, the most part, applies to the online version because it's a website, but um, this is going to be, it's going to be interesting. Okay, um, back to a sample page I have. So this is a sample page um, I've made up. Uh, the first the first thing I have is that, um, oh, where's 1.2? Uh, we have a lot of interactive, um, yeah, we have a lot of interactive figures available on the libraries. So these are things that um, students can manipulate with the mouse or at least are more visually appealing than, um, than just still images. So first I'm going to go to um, CalcPlot 3D. So these are for um, interactive graphs in 3D. Uh, so let's see, probability wave functions. So for calc plot, it generates off. Thank you. Um, for calc plot 3D, it generates um, this graph, which is 3D and is manipulatable. And um, you can tell, so based on this, it's um, for complex, things it's easier to visualize with something that you can rotate around in multiple dimensions. Um, in order to, uh, Domar, is this a content reuse thing? Is that what you wanted me to go with this? That's fine, yes. Okay. You're gonna embed this into a, a page? Uh, yes. Okay, yes. Um, so to stick it in a page, um, we have a, oh, that's covering my thing. Um, we have um, in, Content reuse. So basically we're saying, hey, I want to bring in the content on this page. So I copy the URL of, I want that interactive figure on this page, please. Yeah, not to roll, I just it. Oh, okay. And tomatoes. Processing math jacks. And there it is. So um, by just finding the content in our interactivity library or making a page up in the interactivity library with content on it, you can then use the copy reuse and then put in the, um, the path to it. And then you have the content embedded as part of your page. And that's, that's all you need to worry about. And of course, the nice thing that since it's a link to the page, if there's a problem with this at any point, or if we add additional functionality, it will be updated um, once this page is updated. Um, the next uh, the next one is, um, this is for if you're chemistry specifically or bio and care about molecules, is we have the molecule generator. This is powered by, um, yeah, um, to a large part, PubChem or if you have um, proteins. So let's say I want caffeine um, as a molecule on my page. Um, this pulls up like, hey, this is what caffeine looks like. And you have a lot of options to customize for this molecule. I'm not going to stick with ball and stick. I so I just say. Have any avocado? But oh, it's all right. I mean, the chicken. Uh, Josh, can you mute yeah. yourself, please? Um, so I've copied this molecule to the clipboard, but we have a lot of options if you have proteins. Um, I go over to um, go over to my page, and I just paste it in from. Yeah. Oh, this is supposed to go in a DeciScript block, yes. So red block, paste that in. Yep, and I need to set the embed geomole tag to yes, um, just so I tell the code that, hey, it should run for security reasons. Actually, I might change that. And cool, so now we have so on this page, interspersed with your content, we have um, we have interactive figure here. We got some molecules. I don't know what subject we're trying to teach here, but it's uh, very interesting. Um, and then the next thing I'm actually going to jump to on the list is you might have noticed this box here. Um, is this is a web work problem embedded formatively? Um, so. Since it's a web work problem, every time you refresh the page for practice, it um, generates a new problem seed and the problem changes. 
So students are able to do infinite practice with this web work problem. Um, it's currently operating in a formative mode because we're still trying to figure out um, how to combine this with single sign-on and how to make sure ADAPT knows where to put content on each page. But for practice, it's really nice to have just any sort of practice you want. Um, surprise, my answer wasn't correct. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you can have interactive practice problems. Um, again, if it's the reason that web work and iMath, a lot of the problems are in, you know, there's a lot of existing content for math and engineering specifically, is because there are, it's easy to write a formula to do these auto generated problems. So for stuff that has more soft answers, um, it's more difficult to make um, algorithmic so that students can't like brute force or they can't show the answers. Um, but yeah, so amid all the content of text or images, you can have really nice interactive content. Um, if it's available on the web, it's very likely that you can stick it in here. So you can have YouTube videos. Um, that's actually the, one of the best and easiest ways to make your page more engaging because students are okay with interacting with YouTube videos. Um, but you can have interactive figures for displaying complex visuals. You can have exercises formatively for checking people's progress at least or providing them more practice than just a hard-coded problem. Yeah, so like these are just images um, compared to something in multi-dimensional space for more complex topics. Um, and I think the last thing I'm actually going to cover for the interactivity section um, is Jupyter code. Yes, I'd like to move up. Um, so this last thing which we are working on is for any sort of coding class or any class that involves code. So like um, chemistry, we've had a lot of programming engineering classes. Um, we have enabled, oh, um, this is how you embed a query problem um, using the page ID. But for this case, we're gonna use the Jupyter plugin to embed code. So print hello world, um, this, runs the code on our server in Python, and then you can have output. And as Delmar showed with his quantum class, this code can get really complex and can use libraries like SciPy, Matplotlib. Um, I believe those are Python ones. Yeah, hello world. Um, but we support, support many languages. So if you wanna have um, executable code or if you're statistics, um, there's a lot of options for integrating code with um, Okay, and Delmar's posting stuff as we're going around. Um, yeah, so for embedding code is you type whatever code you want here. Um, I'm just gonna stick with the hello world code for now because I, I can't code that fast on the fly. Um, and it just goes in here. What's nice about these executable code blocks is since it's in the browser and since it's using our servers, um, students don't need to install stuff because that's taken care of secretly behind the scenes. Um, so you can have um, complex visuals. I don't think I have one. Yeah, I removed it here. Um, yeah, so it's, um, it's quite nice having the ability to put code stuff here um, and have it run versus download on your computer, install the dependencies and wait for it to run. Hello world, thank you. Um, I think Josh said show stuff on um, humanities. Josh, would you actually be able to show that? Because I've not. Yes, uh, hang on a minute. I have that queued up. And uh, I'm actually not familiar with anything not on the chemistry library because I just code and I've taken chem classes. Okay. But so let me go back here to. I don't know oh. if you should be seeing now. Mm -hmm. Apropos of everything, this is the gates of hell. Those of you who are familiar with it, it's Rodin's piece where the uh, thinker comes from. So we have here, um, let me go back a bit, a number of, of artworks. Um, very famous um, prehistoric piece. You can put this in uh, archaeology or many other places like that. Uh, 
we have uh, basically, oh, well, that one didn't come. Uh, let me go back here. One I particularly like, Saint Chapelle. So you can have. Uh, oh my! It's God. not. It's not just equations. Uh, you can have lots of three D models. Uh, if there's a three D model that's open that you would like us to include, or you have some some three D models that you've generated. We're quite happy to put it on the bookshelf, and others can use it. I'm, from my mind, Saint Chapelle is was just more astounding than Notre Dame in Paris. Okay, so I guess I'll pass it back to you. Um, I think I'm actually out of things to talk about, but I hope this um, hands-on advanced section, at least me showing for a large part of just there's since Libertex at its heart is a website, there's so much cool interactivity stuff available on the web, um, you know, given licensing, of course, um, when relevant. But there's so much cool interactive stuff that's been generated recently that you can put into a book and it's, it's easy to do as any other website. So you can embed stuff. Um, and yeah, as Josh shows, like there's, there's a lot of really interesting things that are available that so make your book more than text if you, if you want. Um, it definitely makes a difference for students viewing it of instead of a wall of text about the Schrodinger equation, yeah. um, having interactive stuff to both help you learn and to check your learning. Uh, Henry, there's one other important thing about the, our printed textbooks that I don't think anybody else has. Okay. If, you if you have an app or one of these 3D models, uh, when it's printed, it comes with a QR code. And anybody can point their smartphone at it, read this QR code, and be taken to the online uh, image and then manipulate it there. So by this, we've actually been able to build interactivity into print. I think that specific one we may still have that limited to uh, YouTube videos for technical reasons. Um, but yes, that is something that we are really interested in doing um, is, yeah. is putting those um, links on the, on the interactive content so they're viewable even in the print edition using a phone. Um, I think the one thing is, I guess, um, I haven't seen enough people uniformly adopt those interactive technologies for me to be able to add that on. Because like, I've heard some people use the molecule generator and that's one of the bigger ones. But aside from that, I don't have any idea of um, how much people are using print editions. Um, and then also like, what's the best way to add in that stuff in those print editions. Um, okay. Either way, I think I'm out of, I think I've covered everything. If any of you have any questions or would like me to go back and show anything. Um, next up, we, we have a break, so, um, you know. Okay. I'm going to stop recording, unless 